My name is Joe Rigney, Fellow of Theology at New St. Andrews College. The Bible tells us that there are two fundamental ways to live. The way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. The way of the wise and the way of the fool. God's way and the world's way. And every one of us must choose which way to follow, which way to live. We make this choice every day of our lives. This summer at the Called Conference in Moscow, Idaho, I want to clarify this choice for you. Using the first chapter of the Book of Romans, we'll explore the two ways in terms of worship and glory, in terms of manhood, womanhood, sexuality, and in terms of our relationships with other people. The wrath of God is revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. And the pleasure of God is revealed upon all godliness and righteousness of men who by their righteousness celebrate the truth. The choice of ways is before you. I hope to see you there. Hey y'all, welcome to Cross Politics on the Fight Life Feast Network. Pastor Toby Chuck Knox on the Water Boy, and we got the good doc. The good doc. Doctor, you know, Doc Ingles Ingles Stunt. What, what kind of doctor? Like egg, like egg, not egg. Right. Egg Stunt. Mind Eagle-stun. doctor, heart yeah. doctor. What kind of doctor we do? I was an eye surgeon. Eye surgeon. You know, it's funny. I can't see that well, Doc. No. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're gonna do this live. Yeah, yeah. you know. I, I, what, what, hey, what can, can you read this e? <laughs> that's oh. been my problem. Well, what can't you see so well? Well. Uh, we really gonna do this? Okay. <laughs> Small text. I don't. Is that really strengthen your eyes? Okay. Okay. Right. You, you guys can finish this a little bit later. Yeah. yeah. Backwards planning financial. Are you thinking differently about your family's finances and resources while others worry about surviving the next paycheck? The hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. That's from Proverbs. Train your mindset to see where God is moving, where to invest, where to build, so you can create, protect, and pass on your wealth like a Christian. What's your plan to use your economic power? Joe Garisi, with Backwards Planning Financial, coaches his clients to make this kind of impact on their world for generations by integrating investments, debt, insurance, tax-efficient strategies, and legacy planning. Go to Backwards Planning Financial. It's backwardsplanningfinancial.com. NM.com, like New Mexico, but not NM.com <laughs> to connect with Joe today. That's good. And I think a lot of our uh, advertisers and corporate partners are going to be at our conference in, uh, in Prodigal America in October. So oh, you guys can meet, even meet Joe, yeah, Joe out there and talk to him about all yeah. this stuff. So. I like how you're doing another plug on top of that. Just, yeah, you know, come, yeah, come to the conference. Come meet to the, Joe. Come to the conference. Yeah. Uh, prodigalamerica.com. We're grateful to have Dr. <laughs> Richard J. Eggleston. Uh, he's in the in the house with us he today. He said it better than I did. He's about to give uh, Chocolate Knox an eye exam live <laughs> on the show. Oh, okay. It's this one. It's this one, Doc. Oh, I thought it was the prostate you wanted to check. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't doing that live on the show. Wow. <laughs> I thought you was an eye doctor. I don't trust my eye doctor. That's, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's a retired ophthalmologist, uh, but apparently can do other things, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's from uh, Clarkston, funny. Washington, just 30 miles south of here. He's also a veteran of the military. Right. Really? What service did you serve in? I was a flight surgeon in the Army. Okay. Uh, I was in during Nam, but I was not in Nam. Okay. I was, I, they gave me a hardship tour in Europe. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. All right. You received his medical degree from University of Kansas School of Medicine and had been in practice for more than 20 years. He's currently a plaintiff in a lawsuit against the state of Washington regarding the violation of First Amendment rights. So, Doctor, it's great to have you on Cross Politic. Well, I'm glad to be here, and thank you for the invite. And um, so, um, you are in a lawsuit against the state of Washington. Right. Uh, can I interrupt your flow and comment about some of the things you guys talked about earlier? Would that? Oh, no, go ahead. No, go yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you were referring to our previous show yesterday. No, no, I'm about. just talking about what you guys were doing. While I was with Richard here. Dawkins? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, the simple thing with Dawkins is, you know, he, he said he was a Christian until he heard of uh, Darwin, and then that made everything sensible to him. Right. And the thing with him is that when he believes in evolution, what that happens every time there's 
there's a mutation, there's a loss of DNA information. That's right. That's right. But for him to say the things evolved into a new being, that requires new information, new right. DNA. Right. And the only way that is done is with an intelligent being. Right. And right. and we know that computers require intelligence yeah. right. and, and some kind of human direction. Well, to put DNA information in requires some kind of information or uh, ability that isn't there unless it's a god. That's right. right. And that's genetic entropy right. where our DNA gets worse over right. over generations basically. Right. It stri- right. it strikes me that even just his his thoughts about like you know how he likes Christian music right. and, yeah. and Christmas carols and mm-hmm. and cathedrals. Mm-hmm. I mean that that itself is an evidence of that right. point. Right. Like, you don't you don't get these these beautiful edifices Without Complex intelligence, music. without and, intelligence, yeah, right? And right. just to go back, what David said about there, there's this uh, interest in these cultural things like uh, these cathedrals. Well, that's evident by France when they rebuilt Notre Dame Cathedral. That's right. right. You know that yeah. could have just sat there and been right. destroyed, but they right. realized that there right. was something very important yeah. for for their well being spiritually and whatever. Well, that also, you know, if it would have sat there long enough, eventually it would have evolved back yeah. together. <laughs> 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 They just right, rushed right. the process. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just like everything gets built that way. Well, well, you're, you're an eye doctor, and I remember oh, I, I remember thinking um, I, I read um, uh, Darwin's Black Box. Have you ever read that before? Uh, by, by a guy named Behe. Yeah. Oh he, yeah. Oh, yeah. Behe. He, he actually uses the eye. Right. The, the eye is an example of of this principle of what he calls irreducible complexity. Right. Um, where you you can't like. It's not like you can like get you know eighty five percent or ninety percent of all of the ingredients in an eye to come together, and, and, and it works, and it, and it doesn't function. work yeah, it, right. it, it, without you know. There, it, it, according to the even the. Uh, the doctrines of Darwinism is like it, it needs to have a use. Right. Well, but it has it, to be there all at the same time. That's yeah, why. Yeah. That's why this thing from lizards to birds doesn't work because you can't have feathers there for a billion years and then all of a yeah. sudden you get the hollow bones that let you fly. It's all got to be there at the same time. <laughs> right. Right. And then this one other thing about Darwin, he uh, uh, he said, uh, you know, I look at the world or the universe and I see. Uh, this thing where there's no use for anything. He might as well not exist because there's no God or anything. But the rest of us look at it and say, well, this is divinely designed. And without it, and without all these 50 or 60 or 70, 100 or uh, 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 physical characteristics that have to all be there, the universe wouldn't exist and we wouldn't exist. Right. Yeah. So no, it's, no. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty astounding. It's pretty yeah. astounding. But he's, he's the one that should be uh, mocked and stuff. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Aren't you sure you're not an apologist instead of an eye doctor? Yeah. Well, I read a lot. That kind of gets into yeah. why I uh, to come up to the. Uh, a lawsuit of how and why am I writing these things? Yeah, you know I've uh, always read a lot. I love reading. That'll get and, you in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah all my, all that's my your life. first problem. <laughs> and so when I was retired for five or six years, you know I was doing the usual things guys do when they're retired. Yeah, you know, I play golf and everything, but I got boring after a while. Yeah, and so uh, late uh, November of 2020. The Tribune realized that they were two leftists, and they intentionally looked for a couple more, two or three conservative writers. And so I had written something uh, before the 2016 election, not mentioning the two candidates, but just outlining what their positions were. Uh-huh. And so I didn't, didn't quote endorse anybody, sure. but it was clear who was the right person. So anyway, I published that myself and paid for it uh, in the Tribune uh-huh. uh, before the election. It was like late September or so. Okay. And uh, so in November, like I said, they requested a doc or somebody to write on a conservative thing. And so I submitted what I had written before, and they knew what I had written. And they said, well, this is what we like, so we'd like to have you write. So okay. that's how I got started. But the the night before I sent in my resume or my th- information or interest or whatever, I uh, was sitting at my in my in my chair, and before I pushed the button on my uh, the send button on there, you know, I really thought, now am I really supposed to be doing this? Uh-huh. I I said, you know, God, I like to read, I like to know, but I think you want me to do something with this, yeah. and so. Uh, you know, I tell people this, they don't believe it, but it almost felt like my 
finger was pushed <laughs> to send that. So you wrote so, you. Uh, so this is back in 2020. COVID, COVID's right. going crazy. Everyone's right. going crazy. The tribute's going so crazy. They're asking for a conservative writer. Um, and you wrote this article, bad. kind of outlining what you believed COVID was, and kind of maybe some alternative treatments that you think would would work. Is is, is that what the article was? Well, about? not the first one. It, okay, uh, it, was, it was something like that. The first one was, yeah. you know, I explained that doctors and scientists are no different than anybody else. There's as many crooks and good people in there as there is in the general population. There's right. some that are in it just for money. That's the truth. There is yeah. some, some in it for the pride and yeah. and the ability to control people. But how dare you? you <laughs> how dare you <laughs> but but there are most docs are really interested in trying to do the right job but yeah, we, right. we do have these that are like said power hungry or whatever mm -hmm. so, uh, so, like so that was your officers. first that was your it. first kind of covid article yeah it was yeah. just but just about like the, the doctors are human right exactly right yeah and, uh, and then did you, know, you did you get challenged already with your licensing no not from, then okay okay, okay. Oh, that's uh, not then, but my second article was very definitive about uh, covid and stuff and the first year, there was uh, like uh, 13 articles because there's two in October usually. Okay. And so about seven or eight of those were a lot of them on COVID. Okay. And in September, an article I wrote, there's a guy that lives up here in Moscow or Genesee or so. Okay. Uh, he didn't like what I wrote. So he wrote the first thing to the commission saying, you know, this guy's putting bad information out and he's going to hurt people and you should take his license and stuff. What's oh. his name? So, uh, well, I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm going to look point. it up. <laughs> uh, at this point, anyway. But uh, so uh, as I expected, when I started to write these things, I knew there would be some kind of commission involvement. I was on the commission, the medical commission, for six years. Uh, In Washington? Yes, for okay. two, three-year terms. Wow. And so I, I kind of knew how it worked. And the commission does have a valid uh, reason to exist because there are things that happen to patients that shouldn't have happened. Right. Yeah. And they should have a, a, an outlet to get some kind of uh, – information or result Agreed. about uh, why this happened. And so that's why I served on that. And there was a few docs that didn't do things right. And we talked about that and they had problems. But uh, this thing uh, is uh, right after uh, COVID really got started, a thing called the Federation of State Medical Boards. This is the, the federation that controls all the, all the 70 medical units uh, in the United States and the possessions. It controls docs and PAs, and they put out a position statement that we don't want anybody talking against the COVID narrative, and we want you to go after the medical docs and PAs wow. that are saying this kind of stuff. Wow. And that was in 21. Uh, okay. And so this, uh, uh, th this was taken up with vigor by the Washington Medical uh, Commission. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, so... You know, they, they sent me a, a request, or not a request, but a you know, thing that I had to answer uh, about the charges. Mm -hmm. And the, the charges were that I was uh, showing moral turpitude because I was saying things that weren't accepted at that point. Wow. And that's one of the things they repeated several times right. is that you are, you know, setting a bad example and showing people what medicine is not like or what it should not be like okay. versus what I am doing is what it should medicine should be like to be able to present ideas that are different. Because that's the way medicine's always been. You, you get ideas, you... You, uh, you get develop a, a thesis, so to speak. You gather information and you uh, publish it, and then you have debate about it. Right. You know, what's this, what do you think? Why is this wrong? But with COVID, there was no debate. You couldn't even get things published. Right. What were but, you saying? Well, I was saying that the vaccines don't work. <laughs> that they are dangerous because they're an mRNA type of thing, which, uh, and they said, that, well, that can't happen because there's no such thing as what's called reverse transcriptase. That's an enzyme that allows RNA, which is made by DNA, it's uh, to reverse and have the RNA go back and influence the, the DNA, DNA, right? Which, which it can do, right? Uh, and why that happens, there's a lot of discussion about it. There's things like uh, much of the of the human genome is uh, virus particles from our exposure over the decades and centuries, and interesting. Uh, and so there's actually much of the DNA of our uh, of our genome is those particles. Uh, wow. it, it's not as much of the information as we think but the DNA is so incredibly complex 
And there was this uh, statement, I can't remember the guy's name, I wrote it in one of my articles, that said when, when the DNA complexity and how that worked become known, this whole concept of evolution should have just stopped and fallen on his face right there because, yeah. like I said, you can't put new information in to make new tissues right. without without somebody doing that. So anyway, to get up to why, to the time of the um, uh, of the, the suit. So uh, we've gone back and forth with my attorney on this with the uh, with the commission, and we were going to have a, a hearing uh, about this. And th- there's no reason for the commission to go after me because I'm retired. Uh-huh. Although I have an active retired license, right. that would give me the ability to resume practice if I needed to, if there right. was some kind of national emergency yeah. or something like that, that they needed all the docs they could get. Right. Uh, but I also kept it so I could be able to talk to the commission if they ever came mm-hmm. to that yeah. and hopefully be able to give them some input. But I, at the time, didn't realize that they were working under the Federation of State Medical Board's directive yeah. that they should go after people. Wow. Yeah. And so... Uh, you know, even if we were to have a hearing, it's uh, it's pretty much what uh, you know we know it would be. They would have the foregone collusion yeah. that I was doing things wrong. It's and, a kangaroo hearing. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So, so um, apparently, part of what they were going after is that is that you questioned the existence of COVID nineteen. Well, and, I questioned the, the existence of a wild. COVID-19. Okay. It's pretty clear that this by Fauci's uh, payment and, and backing and everything, that there was enhancement of a, of a natural vac- a virus. Mm. And there's a sequence of uh, amino acids that are not anywhere in nature, and but they were incorporated into this uh, COVID vaccine. And so, uh, yes, he uh, they're, they don't want that information out. And as you know, there's such a, uh, a a cooperation between the federal government and all the media mm-hmm. to suppress information. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know. I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> never heard that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't agree. I don't agree. <laughs> we, we've never, never. Been, we've never been censored no. on okay. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Government is good <laughs> to <laughs> us. Yeah. It's government so, real good to us. Yeah. So a lot of the main good docs, you know, they'd put out a video or, or talk, and it would be censored. It would be knocked off yep. of, of, yeah. of the, all the things. Yeah. And there's a number of these uh, super smart guys, much smarter than I am about all this. That have, one of them is like Dr. Malone, who's one of the yep. developers We've of the R. You've Malone. had him on? Yeah. yeah. Him on. Oh, yeah. what a great man. <laughs> he yeah. came here? Huh? No, 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 he didn't come to the studio. To we just had yeah. him on via oh. Zoom. Oh, awesome. He's a super, super man. So, uh, so we get to the point uh, where they, uh, they're going to have this kangaroo thing, which, like I said, we would participate, and there would have been numerous good docs. And I, we tried to get Dr. Malone. I don't know if he was going to be available or not. To testify. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the attorney that's working with us from the CHD, that's Kennedy's group, you know. Okay. Um, he uh, he he told my attorney and me because that's when we all kind of got together. He said, "This is the exact kind of case I've been looking for my entire career." Oh wow! Okay, is a medical case that's not uh, a medical treatment. Yeah. It is. Does the doc have the right to say things? Uh, as a free speech and First Amendment rights. And for 75 years, the Supreme Court and other federal courts have upheld that right, that we can have soapbox speech and not be uh, impaled or stopped by it. As a matter of fact, a a temporary injunction that was put on uh, against the commission by the uh, appeals court in Spokane gave the the attorney general and the commission a, a very I think a very good warning that this is first amendment rights wow. be, be very careful okay. yeah. so uh, so th- this suit has been filed uh, by CHD and and uh, attorney Rick Jaffe uh, and and we, you just filed this lawsuit against the uh, commission like three weeks ago or something. Yeah, four about weeks ago. that or a month yeah. ago. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's actually against the attorney general yeah. and the commission. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, I've I've got to know John Stockton in the past. Well, right. after uh, in January of twenty two is when I met him, and I yeah. gave him a stack of all the stuff I'd written in twenty twenty one, and because I'd seen him on a pod, the podcast right. too, and I said, "This guy's right. smart; he knows stuff." Yeah, and so and we're talking about John Stockton, the, the Hall of Famer, the former basketball yeah. Yeah. Hall, Hall of Famer. Famer. Right. I reached out to him trying to get him to join us today. Yeah, well, he's over in Europe now. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he didn't respond. He's a little busy. Ah. He's a little busy. <laughs> yeah. With these kids. So yeah. uh, anyway, uh, instead of having me be the lead, which I think is a really a good thing, 
uh, because if something were to happen to me and, you know, if I, quote, suddenly committed suicide, <laughs> you know. You're not feeling suicidal. <laughs> then, right? uh, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then they actually the suit would die. But it's based upon John as, and others yeah. as a civilian, as a non-medical yeah. person, having the right to be able to get information. Yeah, mm. I see. And mm. uh, and you can't get it if your doctor can't tell it to you because right. he's going to be lose his license or be just je- uh, you know, right. be jeopardized in some way. Interesting. Or another. So, so you're hitting yeah. both sides. Your your right to speak, right, and also their right, right to John's right to get information. Get the right. information. Right. Yeah. right. There's uh, three other or two other docs uh, uh, directly involved with it too. And as soon as this gets to the hearing stage, or actually in the in the court, we're going to demand from the uh, uh, the commission the names of all the docs that they have persecuted. Yes. For uh, yes. for being able for for saying things for speaking that, out. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's going to be at least fifty or sixty other doctors oh. named uh, as, wow. as plaintiffs in this. What? So this is apparently going to be sometime in late May when this happens, and it'll be up to the federal court in Spokane where this is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me let me read this yeah, ad, yeah. and then I, I want to follow this up some more. Um, you guys are aware that we have a new app, right? If not, you should download it right now. Head on over to your favorite app store, whatever you use on your smartphone. Type in Cross Politic, Fight Laugh Feast, or just pub tv once you find the app you may need to update your old app if you had one or if you have a droid phone yeah. you may if you have a droid phone just take it and <laughs> <laughs> go to the store <laughs> buy your apple or fix or your problem maybe just delete it and just redownload it that's cheaper well once downloaded <laughs> once downloaded you'll be able to view or listen to all our content right on your mobile device. As always, if you'd like to sign up for our pub membership, you can head over to fightlaughfeast.com. That's fightlaughfeast.com. But you can download the app and get access to our daily shows and all the other shows on the Fight Laugh Feast network right away. But if you're a pub member, then there's some special content for you. So, Doc, I got to ask, you're suing them. You're right. What do you want them to do? Well, if you win the case, what is it that you're wanting? Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, they got to stop what they're doing. Stop. They're still doing this. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's okay. a, it's a, even with the knowledge that this is a strong First Amendment case, they are still going after it. And the warning that the that the appeals court gave them, they said, be very careful about going after this kind of a case. Well, and they, the they, they, were not, they were not deterred at all. No. Okay. No. Now, did, did they did they suspend your license or take it away? Well, or no, they just wanted me to. Uh, to uh, uh, say, yes, I, I'm wrong. And I wrote one of the articles I wrote, which says, well, yes, I wrote that stuff, but I'm not wrong. <laughs> and uh, yeah. They and, want you just to say that I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. And, and essentially apologize. So that would mean that everything I wrote was, was false yeah. as far as my belief in it. And wow. so no way that's going to happen, you know, because. You know. so, so is that still like pending or are they just putting pressure on you? Well, like I said, there's there's still t- a couple of phases in this. One is we may still be going back to the commission hearing about whether my license is going to be in any way uh, yeah. uh, affected. Yeah. But this uh, First Amendment course uh, case is a federal case should take precedent. And yeah. if this thing gets settled the way we expect it to and want it to be, which every one of you should be happy that it goes Amen. that way and everybody Amen. listening, right. then you're going to get be able to get true advice and information from your docs. I can't tell you the number docs that tell me, you know, I wish I could say, and when I first started writing these articles in 21, I got I got emails from docs in the United States, in Canada, yeah. uh, England, yeah. France, yep. Brazil, wow. uh, South, uh, 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 New Zealand, and Australia saying, we keep on writing. We wish we could say the same thing, but we can't. Wow. And then I got the same thing from patients and people from all those countries, plus at least half the states. Wow. So uh, they, they didn't feel like they could say the same thing because they felt like that. It, right. Because they, they knew on. something that was wrong and they couldn't get information from their docs. What? The, the patients. And so uh, yeah. I, I showed that to the uh, publisher of the paper, yeah. and I showed him all these results because I know he's never gotten mail uh, from a, an opinion like they did on this case <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and this thing. And right, they yeah. continue to keep getting these letters from people that wow. are just so, say, keep it up. It's so appreciated. But uh, the <clears throat> the uh, publisher, uh, at, when this case become uh, became uh, 
uh, public and everything. He didn't want me to write about COVID specifically until the case got settled. Well, it's been two years almost since this has gone on. Mm-hmm. So the, the Tribune will occasionally write an article or, or publish an article from a different paper talking about the vaccines and talking about this and that. And so I, I point out to, uh, to to Butch, I said, well, your mission statement is to publish both sides of an article, mm. of, a, of an opinion or yeah. something. Yeah. So since you guys are writing these and publishing these articles, you know, you got to follow your statement and let me write and rebuttal to it. And yeah. so I've been able to do that two or three times. Okay. And so even though they don't want me to directly write about it, you know, I am re- in a rebuttal. So that's a... Uh, there you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Doc, yeah. is this happening in Idaho too? At no. a state well, level? somewhat it is, a little bit. Uh, because... Uh, uh, but but it is still a little bit. But uh, Dr. Ryan Cole. Yeah. yeah. We know yeah. Dr. Cole. He's been here. Been. Yeah. Because you've done him too good. Yeah. Well, well, you guys are getting, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Those people like you. We want them all. <laughs> yeah. Well, well um, I'm really honored then if those yeah. two guys have been on your interview and other ones. Because uh, they, they are really the cream. And, yeah. and they're really giving you the best information. We had possible. Dr. Jay Bhattacharya sitting over there. Oh, really? Dr. Ryan Colson right here right. on the same show. Yeah. 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 Holy smokes. Do- <laughs> I, I got to ask, I'm not trying to be rude here, but I have to know, um, how old are you? I'm, uh, I'm going to be 84. You're going to be 84. Right. Yeah. How long have you been practicing medicine? Well, I got my medical license in 1967. Okay. Wow. And so wow. then, you know, I went into military. I interned yeah. in the military. Yeah. Man, I and hope I look as good as you at 84. Seriously. <laughs> well, I, 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 I hope I'm look, still fighting like you yeah, at 84. Yeah, for real. Absolutely. For real. Well, so if you I, get your regular prostate exams, you will. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, so, so in all your years, uh, one of the things I think is, you know, I mean, uh, how, are you, how are you going to come back? I'm from not that? going to. How are you going to recover? I'm, yeah. So, I mean, that's of, like 60, 70 years of medical practice. Right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, and one of the things that I'm. Our, and this medical association is telling you, you're, you you shut up. I'm getting there, Gabe. Hold on, uh, hold on. I know you. you mad you're, you're, that's I'm where I'm going. I'm doing the math. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. He's like, I'm old I'm, enough to be your grandpa. I'm trying to work through the prostate thing still. <laughs> um, but no, but so then, one of the problems that we have currently right now is that us younger folks don't have any older folks to give us the wisdom and the knowledge historically. We don't have the same historical narrative. Have you, in all of your medicine, and all your work, and all your years of being here, 84 years, have you seen anything like this before? No, not exactly. But, and some things I've written about before, over, this, over the centuries, there's been many things that mainline medicine absolutely forbid, and in science, too. Yeah. You know, you know about Galileo and Newton. They were, mm-hmm. they were tried to be shut down because what they were talking about was Chris? not acceptable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a, uh, there was an OB doctor named Semmelweis. You, know, you may have heard about him, maybe not. He was in the 17, 1800s, and he realized that the, the women that were delivered by MDs oh, yeah. had about three times or four times the mortality rate than those delivered by midwives. That's right. And so he checked that out and came to the conclusion that uh, it was the midwives that were washing their they hands. They washed their hands. They were oh, clean. Oh, yeah. wow. And the docs were coming from autopsies, yep. you know, uh, just those gross things contaminated and not washing their hands. Oh, and so, wow. It, it, Blood but, contamination. And all right. That. So it took about 50 years before that was accepted. And as a matter of fact, when uh, he was kicked out of the medical societies and wow. he eventually uh, was put in a sane asylum, he escaped. Uh, from that, but then they caught him and beat him to death because he was still saying these things that were not acceptable. My and, and so then, you're still only at the first stage. The yeah. 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 Is coming yeah. Next. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I've been in the asylum asylum yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Try, they're trying to put him there. Yeah, but there's a bunch of other things that are very important, like this whole thing about uh, sugar that's good for you and the fats are bad. Well, that was in the 60s and so, where two Harvard physicians were paid by the sugar industry. 
industry mm -hmm. to wow. make that to put that study out that sugar is not bad for you. That's where you get the spoonful of sugar, right? Well, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, and that's why you have all this all this down. obesity now, and these kids, yeah. you know, that are still eating all that sugar, yeah. and they're going to have terrible problems throughout their whole life. Right. And then uh, a, a doctor who found that the that most gastric ulcers were caused by bacteria. Well, he, this was in the '80s or so. Okay, and he was at Harvard, and they kicked him out because that was unethical to say that. And the only way he could prove that this was the case was he infected himself with the Heliobacter pylori, which is the name of the bacteria. Yeah, uh, got the ulcer, cured himself with taking an antibiotic, and then they accepted this. That well, this may be true. Wow. So, Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, could have gone either way. Now, Stop they, beating they, them at least. <laughs> yeah. Well, they 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 then uh, you know agreed that that was the probability thing. And then in my field, you know, the way of doing modern cataract surgery with the instruments that were done, that was completely verboten by the mainline docs. The use of implants uh, that are done on everybody who gets cataract surgery, those were really forbidden, too, for a long time. Yeah. This whole refractive business, which I, you know, did the first ones in the, in the Northwest, uh, those, yeah. uh, those were, uh, you know, again, just slash and gash, you know. Now, just like everything new, there are some learning things, but they outline the whole concept yeah, that right. this should be done this way. Wow! And so nowadays with modern cataract surgery, you're in and out within an hour or two and yeah. you go about your normal activity. When I was a resident, uh, you know, 60 or 70 years ago, whatever that was, uh, patients were in the hospital and laid at bed rest for six or seven days wow. uh, because they didn't really uh, suture the wound. Uh, because it didn't have small enough suture at that point. So it was wow. just put back in position and it had to start healing by itself. <laughs> and uh, <sighs> yeah, so the incision now is about the size of a millimeter or two. Yeah. And uh, so it's that's that's why you can get up and do your normal activity. So there's been many things that mainline medicine and uh, the establishment have said, well, this is stupid. You can't do it. It's illegal and you're immoral to do it. But, uh, you know, so. So, uh, Doc, I mean, you've mentioned, I mean, you've seen, you saw this. Um, we've, we've talked to Dr. Cole, we've talked to Dr. Bhattacharya, you know, some, some of these other, Dr. Malone. You've heard from a lot of other doctors who said, we wish we could say this. But it, but it seems like um, there's still a pretty large percentage that didn't see it. They, they, they heard mm. the narrative. They went along with the narrative. And I guess my, right. my question is, why not you? I mean, why, why, do, why do you think you... That's a good question. Um, you, you, I'm glad you asked it because uh, that there's a, several reasons. One, uh, you know, in medical school, you know, I, I didn't really know enough to know that I should question anything. And I, fortunately, at that time, I didn't have to question yeah. much. But when I was in the military, I saw the, the things that, that pilots that had like ten or 12,000 hours of flying killed themselves and others because they made a stupid mistake. One of them was at the XO, the executive officer of the detachment where I was. Uh, he uh, flew, he, there was two, two planes that flew from Verona to Milan to pick up the new commanding two-star general for the Southern European Task Force, CTAF. And they were to land in, in, in Milan, which they did, and the first plane took off, no problem. The second plane with the XO and the major, major general he uh, takes off, but he's pointed at the short end of the runway, and he crashes and kills himself and the general. And uh, and then there was a couple other times that I could have been, because I was trying to get on that flight because I oh. needed a few hours. Wow. So I could have been on that and killed. Wow. Uh, and there's two other times, at least, that I could have been killed in military uh, air, aircraft. So my initial thing was I see that these people are supposed to know all this, and they're supposed to be competent and make mistakes. Yeah. And then when I got into practice and saw the things I was in red, Yes. about knew the things I just outlined of yes. all the things that medicine and science said you couldn't do. I said, well, that's, that's not right. So yeah. when this thing came up with COVID, I, I, I said, this doesn't sound right either. They're using a vaccine uh, that's uh, never been tested. It's, uh, it's never, uh, usually vaccines to be approved, mm. it takes six or seven years. Right. Right. So you had copious vision. Right, yeah. Hey, look at you. And so uh, when, when that happened, and, and I saw the, that this was just like the pharmaceuticals, you know, I, be, I realized how much influence pharmaceuticals have. Most, most of the income from magazines or mm. the journals is from pharmaceutical 
money because yeah. yeah. they'll rebuy the print of the article that they want printed. And a lot of times, uh, if and to get something printed or, or funded, it's usually the pharmaceuticals or the government because that's how much how much money it takes to get wow. these things published. Yeah. And so when that when you don't uh, come up with a negative result, well, that doesn't usually get published. Right. Or if it's not what they want, you may not get that published either. Yeah. So there's a lot of pressure on on uh, physicians and and researchers right. to publish what is going to keep your salary. Yeah, yeah, keep the money coming in. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. And and that's a terrible thing. As a matter of fact, two of the uh, the one of the uh, editors of the Lancet uh, about uh, this was like 20 years or 30 years ago. He said that even then, at least half of the publications were fraudulent, wow. and many of them had to be retracted. And there's uh, same thing with some of the, of the American medicine stuff. Uh, it's it's uh, wow. it's not true. Yeah, a lot of it. Wow. And uh, so, but if this it's, is, if it's like, a narrative and and it makes some money, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I um yeah, uh, it's like you peel back this onion, and things are a lot more corrupt than you realize. I remember. Um, I had a buddy who coached um, football at Wazoo, Washington State University, and coached football at other schools and everything. Mm-hmm. And All he, of it. He, he told me, I'm not going to say the other schools because then people might figure out what I'm talking about. Uh, but he said at one college, not WSU, they knowingly graduated people who couldn't read. Yeah. They um, they had their the, – the tests would be in their coach's office. The players would come in, get the test, sign their name on it, turn it in. <laughs> yeah. They, they didn't take the test. Take the test. They didn't take the test. They come and pick it up, though. Hey, we talking about athletes? And it's not, yeah. Football. Are we surprised? Football athletes. <laughs> uh, but what was my, – my brother had his uh, little um, uh, uh, 13-year-old son. Uh, one of his assignments at school was to do a little research project on the Pac-12, what was back then like the, the Pacific Coast Conference or something like that, back in 1920s and 30s. And they found in 1930s um, this the, – the Pac-12 what was, um, was so corrupt – that they hired a former FBI guy to come in and kind of just tell us where we're all corrupt. And and all the schools signed a document saying, hey, we're going to be pu- uh, punished for our past sins. <laughs> it's just, we're just, we're just going to expose everything. Get the, let, we're going to start over at zero, right? Okay. So this FBI guy comes in and finds all this corruption. And two years later, he turns in his report, and the report was so bad they burned it. Yeah, I'm sure. Like never went public. And, and I think in the, in, in the same way, like you start peeling this onion in the medical profession. Right. And you start realizing, well, this has been corrupt for a long time. Right. Well, you know, and it's getting even worse with this wokeism that you guys talked about. Mm. Uh, the uh, the medical uh, cat exam, that's the test you yep. take to prove you have enough brains or enough knowledge or enough thinking ability yep. to be able to do medicine, that's been essentially eliminated. It's It was dumbed down. For, that's because it was racist. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very racist. And dumb. sexist. Wait, so, wait. Well, so, I want to hear it been dumbed. What do you mean dumbed down? Well, they, the, they changed the, the d- difficulty level of yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then they got it to the point where it's just pass fail. Right, and so if you're looking for pass somebody, fail. yeah, wow, and so if you get if you look for somebody to become a resident or on your staff, yeah. you try to find out you know what what level they were. Was it good or not? It's like all you see yeah. is pass fail. Yeah, well, so that's that's the problem with it. And this thing you talked about with DI, yeah. DEI is getting even worse. The same thing with the attorneys. You yeah. know, they don't have to take a med cat anymore. It's just because yeah. they want to practice law that now they're allowed to do it right. just because right. they have the desire. And the same thing for medicine. Yeah, they they, they you, self-identify as a lawyer, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Why, now, why aren't more of your professionals standing up like you? Well, there are a lot. You know, Doctor Bacchitore, Doctor Malone, Doctor uh-huh. yeah, uh, yeah. all these all these big guys, and there's yeah. a lot of them. Uh, and you don't probably hear a lot of them because there's names that come up that I haven't heard yet. They're involved in suits and stuff, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But uh, there, are, there is a lot, and uh, they've given up a lot. A lot of given up whole careers, and uh, you know they've been shut down, kicked out of uh, out of uh, medical mm-hmm. schools, where they have the the. Uh, the cure rate of COVID was was outstanding, but right. it was done inappropriately right. uh, or inappropriately. So, uh, is, do, you, do you think that um, one of the things we've talked a little bit about? I forget the guy's name. Yeah, could I come back to that just a minute before oh, sure, I get distracted? Ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've written uh, there. I, I, I'm not really unhappy too much with the docs who see patients, you know, but that they have their own self protection that they need to do for themselves and their family. But if all the docs stood up and they were all kicked out of practice, what happens to all the patients? Yeah. They who, follow, they follow the docs. Well, no, if they lose their license, they follow the docs. They follow the docs. 
Uh, well, I was. I, I was like, all right, oh, my yeah, doctor's office is, open in my house now. This, well, this is what I wanted to ask you. But you can't practice without a license. <laughs> but we follow the docs. <laughs> I don't need the government. Well, is, I guess. I guess that's what I was, what I was going to ask. Is I, it seems like there's a, at least a, a, a. I know it's a very, very, very tiny minority, but there's a. Um, we have doctors in town, for example, who are doing direct primary care type stuff. We're not. They don't take any insurance money. They're not taking any federal funding. Yeah, good. And and really trying to like cut the strings as much as possible, right? So that they're free, right? Um, we know we've got a friend who's doing a surgery center here in town, and there's another one already. There's a kind of a free market surgery in centers Oklahoma. that are starting to open up. Yeah, I'm just wondering. I mean, do you? I mean, I hear you. I mean, and there's this, there's absolutely we've, we've joked about this around here because too because I'm I'm a little bit more on the like I do want my doctors to have that license, and he's like I don't care. <laughs> but, but I want uh, them to be around for sixty years doing it. Yeah, but but That's I, what I, I but I guess I'm, I'm wondering, do you think? What I mean, give put your profit hat on for a second. And do you th- like? Do you see? I mean, are we so corrupt that that a lot of this is just going to have to sort of, I don't know, it's going to die, and, well, and something new is going to come up, or is there going to be like an alternative version of like licensing? And well, there's several points to that. One of them would be lawsuits, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Please yep. remind me if okay. I forget okay. that. lawsuits. lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Uh, 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 the problem with a lot of medicine is it's corporized, uh, corporization. Yeah, you right. belong to a to a medical group. You belong to a hospital staff, and if you don't practice the way they want, you lose yeah. your job. It's mobster right. based, right? Uh, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. mobster. Well, you're exactly right. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, so the remedy I think is is coming up th- from a lot of the attorneys who have courage, like my two, yep. and a couple of other ones. As a matter of fact, guy running for uh, the uh, attorney general, Dr. Uh, Mr. Serrano. Uh, in Washington, yeah, okay. He's from Tri Cities. He was working with me on my on my cases to begin with. Interesting. Yeah, uh, uh, but uh, they're they're filing lawsuits all over for this kind of a thing, plus patients being injured, and there's it's cool. been difficult because you can't you can't get money from the government because the the way the law is written is that the vaccine makers yeah. are immune, right? Unless they have done fraudulent. Or th- so what, then that opens it up. It, yeah, go ahead, Doc. I'll but, let you talk. Yeah, but the uh, th- th- that's I think going to be the thing that that changes a lot of this is when some of these people that have made these laws, like uh, Collins and Fauci and mm-hmm. and uh, Burke and all those kind of things that promoted this, and the FDA had said, yep. "Well, I can't say that word." Matter of fact, but uh, <laughs> not, not FDA, but another word. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, but uh, the Foundational <laughs> Discipleship Association. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when, when and they, uh, when some of them may get personally held responsible, yeah. And when those kind of things happen, uh, then there's going to be a big change. But I haven't seen that happen yet. Well, it, it, I think it's in the process. There's an attorney, a couple of attorneys from Florida that are working in Texas on a couple of cases that are going to be this thing. They're going; these people are going to be held responsible. It's, it strikes me that there is something that's sort of related back to the Dawkins thing. Actually, yeah. is like, I mean, people in America, people in the I mean, we want medicine to work. People want to be healthy. They want to have doctors that give them good information. Right. But you can't have good medicine if you don't believe in the truth. If you don't believe in, in, in that, that God made the world a certain way. Right. I mean, um, despite all the you know mistakes that even Christians have made, That's right. it, it, the, the, the fact that um, Christianity is true, the fact that God made the world a certain way means you can always check it. Right. And, and then there's there's good answers and bad answers right. over time, right. and and it seems to me that like you know the whole DEI woke thing. I mean, I was actually picturing as you're thinking as you're talking about the pass fail thing on the exams and the, the standards going down. I keep I'm thinking of like the the door flying off of the the, the, right. the Boeing seven. Right. <laughs> You know, the right. 747 right. Uh, or whatever it was that, um, you know, it's like, you know, it actually like truth matters and quality and excellence matter. And when you just say, well, what's more important is that we have certain quotas of people, right. uh, you know, sexual <laughs> deviance or, or you right. know, certain number of racial ethnic categories, not quality. Right. Well, well that ha- that has a, an effect on reality. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's in certain states <clears throat> if you don't if you have the right answer in math questions, uh, you you may be called racist because, right. yeah. yeah. And yes. so yes. and so I, I used the thing in one of my articles about well, if under DEI, if you got a guy that builds a bridge and he's got a yard gap on the roadway and if you complain about having that and you're called racist because you do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or you crash your car and fall into the yeah. road, like, 
So, um, uh, all so, right. Yeah. But you were ta- you want to tell us about lawsuits. lawsuits? Yeah. Well, that's why I was talking about these ones okay. that are that are happening. And there's one that uh, a doctor or a Mr. Uh, F- uh, Fulmich, uh, he's a German, okay. uh, and he's been uh, working for a couple of years on cases in the world uh, court uh, against wow. this stuff. So, I yeah. mean, there's a, a lot of a lot of good work being done. It yeah. just isn't publicized. Yeah. Just like you you don't hear about it, much yeah. of the stuff because wow. the media is cooperative you know, and keeping and it quiet. I appreciate oh. I appreciate Doc's um I appreciate your optimism about this because yeah, I also, me too. I also think like that's that's something that's really really important for us to hear from our fathers mm-hmm. and grandfathers. Yeah. That like yeah. I mean you you've you've seen some things. Yeah. yeah. And well, it, it, you alluded to that earlier that that uh, secularism is kind of fading off and that's what yeah. I think is happening too. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of young people in in, in a lot of kind of religions and stuff that are understanding this. You know, yeah. like it seems always the young people understand more than the old people. <laughs> well, sometimes. Not, not, <laughs> you, you're talking about Gen Z? <laughs> <laughs> I think we, well, we both, I think it's I mean it's, I mean the way God made the world is that I mean there there's supposed to be a a communion, symbiotic relationship, a, a fellowship yeah, yeah. between yeah. the old and the young. That's right. So, so that we we learn from one another and watch out for one another, and that's and that's what I mean. I think we're supposed to be embodying in the church, in particular, when we yeah. when we gather together. There, we we have the older reminding the younger of what has happened before, and then there is new insight and new creativity that's shared with the older generations, and we're blessed. But I think so much of what modernism and secularism has tried to do is divide the generation. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You know, the whole thing has been to get rid of the family. Yes, uh, absolutely. You know, that, that If they can get rid of the family, and that yeah. was talked about in 1960s or even earlier, oh, yeah. you know, oh, when yeah. Dewey came out, but yep. there was a... Yeah. Uh, this guy's uh, read. I know. This I know. guy's read some books, he knows you guys. Dewey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, but there's this uh, man, I'll think of his name in a minute, but he was the head of the, or, of the Education Assistance or Association, and he says we have to get rid of the knowledge that the parents are passing on to the children yeah. yep. because we want them not having any allegiance to a state, to a God, or to their family. We want them to uh, have allegiance to the group that provides for them. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and, and that fundamentally, I mean, a lot of that was aimed at a kind of statism. Right. They, oh, they, yeah. they wanted the point of unity to be the state. Right. Uh, the government rather than family, rather than church, right. rather than local communities. Well, that's why, you know, all the minorities, you know, and Charles Barkley, <laughs> he said this thing. He said that the blacks have been Democrat, voting Democrat for 60 years and they're still poor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) i know it i know it no you're absolutely you're absolutely right and and so then how do you explain people like dr ben carson you know or thomas soul yeah uh how are these people who are you know in poverty and everything uh how how did they get Mm -hmm. to the point that they yeah that's not because they they're dei that got them there <laughs> well, if, if you, there's a social credit to war, right. I guess. Uh, if you ask yeah. Justice Thomas, he would say yes. Yeah. That's the problem, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, I right. Meant, and I mentioned meant to mention him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So. no, it's it's well, it is it is so it is so good to talk to you. Yeah, huh? it, it's so good to I mean, is, anything else that we haven't asked you about. What, you need, no, you need, this, you need, this has been fun, uh, great and fun, and I appreciate. I well, you guys are very 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 intelligent men. I well, have to. Well, 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 no, you haven't been here long enough. No. no I, I, <laughs> Uh, thank you. Did you just hear what he said about DEI a minute ago? I mean, come on, come on. No, man, it's been absolutely a pleasure to be up here. And, and uh, well, please we're, keep us abreast of your case. Keep, I'll, keep fighting. Wanna, Don't yes. stop. I want to know about this case. We want to yeah. follow oh, yeah. it. And, well, and, and, it'll be national news probably. Okay. Well, be, that's. I, I don't think we didn't talk about it as much, but the thing that's on the table here is not just the medical side, which is super important. But the freedom of speech, I was wondering. Yeah, First Amendment. First Amendment stuff, because in this case, you could really have journalists say, wait a second, I need to know, too, what he's talking about, because yeah. this is an alternative to what they the narrative is. Silence yeah. him. They, they silence, silence him. Me. Now, the people don't, the fourth estate isn't working. This mm-hmm. is a huge, yeah. huge right. case. Can I, it has massive implications. Yeah. Go ahead. But there's a Dr. Renata Mood, who was a pediatrician at, uh, and was at WSU in Spokane, a very, very good doc. Yeah, I, I think know, I've, I've been in touch her. with her, I think. And uh, she testified at uh, Senator uh, Johnson's uh-huh. hearing. Yeah. And uh, because of her testimony, she was essentially fired. Wow. And the main 
main thing she testified about was she pulled out a package insert, which is still the case. One of my relatives who is in medicine daily Mm -hmm. says it's still the same. It says intentionally left blank on both sides. And what the insert is supposed to do is to list all the complications that a patient needs to know so he can make an informed decision if he wants to take it. Wow. And this is for the vaccine? For anything. Oh, okay. It's federal law that that be done, but it's not being done. The pharmaceuticals can, again, get away with stuff because, you know, however, whatever connection they have. But it's st- you, you, if you, next time you get uh, such. You're I, not feeling I, suicidal. I'm in touch with them. <laughs> not, 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 not. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> like, you're a pretty happy guy, right? You're happy. Like, you love Jesus, Jesus, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know. <laughs> but keep us abreast of your case. Man. I'm really interested to see oh, how everything yeah. goes. Appreciate this you so much. This has been show, great. Guy. This well, has been great. You. Appreciate it, and thank you, guys. Yeah. Absolutely. If you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, go baptize them until tomorrow. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic. Uh, that was good. Uh, you know, now that we're off the air, there is one thing I, that I didn't agree with you guys talking to begin with. And that, oh. And, well, don't, don't oh. say it in the mic. We like this. <laughs> no, this is the exciting part. No, 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 this is, this he don't want this recorded. He don't want this recorded. <laughs> no, this is off topic, but... Uh, Today we are going to be talking about the Kyle Rittenhouse Always Ready Bundle available at armoredrepublic.com. It's a very practical kit, including everything that you need all the way from hydration to first aid to general purpose to magazine holders and to a very comfortable plate carrier. So included is the Testudo Gen 3 plate carrier and we also have two C3 plates that I've included in the bundle. So these plates are multi-curve multi-hit ceramic so they can take multiple rounds. I really like these plates because it's gonna offer level four protection. Thank you guys for watching. Again, you go to armorrepublic.com, linked below, and you can purchase your Kyle Rittenhouse Always Ready Bundle today.